Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be solving a programming question called valid parentheses. This is considered an easy question and it involves a data structure called stacks. So given a string containing just the characters, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly brace, close curly brace, open bracket and close bracket, determine if the input string is valid. An input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets. So if we have an open parentheses, it will be closed by a closed parentheses, and so on. And open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So that means that the last opening string before a closing string will be the first string to be closed. So if our last opening string was a curly brace, we would have to close that curly brace right after that. And note that an empty string is also considered valid. So here we have five examples. The first example is clearly valid, and the second example is also valid. But then in the third example, we have a opening parentheses, but a closing bracket. So the opening parentheses never got closed, and also the closing bracket never got opened. So that is invalid. In the fourth example, we have what seems to be a valid string, but it is not valid because it is in the wrong order. We have a opening parentheses, an opening bracket, but we have no closing bracket right after that. Instead, we have a closing parentheses and then a closing bracket, whereas it should have been a closing bracket first and then a closing parentheses because the opening bracket was the last string to be opened, so it had to be closed first. And in our fifth example, we have a valid string because there's an open curly brace and then an open bracket, which is the last string to be opened, and then it was closed right after that. And then the curly brace also got closed after that. So that is a string that was opened and closed in the correct order, so it's a valid string. And the perfect data structure to solve this problem is a stack, because the stack will help us keep track of the last open strings. Now let's look at how to solve this problem in more detail. To solve this problem, we'll look at an example input and we will also create our own stack data structure. A stack data structure is basically a list where the last item that was put into the stack will be the first item that gets returned to us. So if the string is an opening character, we will add that to our stack. And if the string is a closing character, we will pop our current stack see if that character in the pop stack and the character in our input match. And if they match, that means the string is still valid. And if they don't match, that means it is not valid. So if it's not valid, we'll just return false. If it's still valid, we will look at all the other items and do the same thing. And then in the end, if the stack is empty, our string is valid because all opening strings got matched with closing strings. And if it's not empty, that means that one of the opening strings didn't have a closing string or there was a closing string and there was no opening string for it. Or they were just in the wrong order. So let's try and code that out. I'm going to start by creating my own stack data structure. Python already has lists, their data structure is very similar to the stack, but I just wanted to create my own just for fun. So I'm going to initialize a class called stack. And it's going to use Python's list. So I will set myself.stack to be equal to an empty list. Now I'm going to check if it's ever empty, so def is empty, and I'm gonna just going to see if the length is equal to zero. Okay, now I'm going to do the main operations, which are push, and push is the same as adding an item to the end of the list, so self.stack append and I have to add an item so push an item and then I'm gonna pop and 
Python already has a built-in pop function for the list. And I'm going to peek the length of the self.stack minus one. So we get the last item, which would be the first item in terms of a stack. And so now we have our stack implemented. Let's use the stack that we just created to keep track of the opening characters in the input string. Now we're going to set the opening and closing variables. The opening variables are going to be opening parentheses, opening curly brace, and opening bracket. The closing variables are going to be the closing parentheses, the closing curly brace, and the closing bracket. This is going to let us check and see if our characters are matching. We will use this later when we pop the stack and we get the opening character from the pop stack and compare it with the character we currently have in the loop, which is going to be our closing character. Now we'll handle one of our corner cases, which is if the string is empty, we will return true because an empty string is considered a valid parenthesis. And then we will also handle another corner case, which is if the string input is less than two characters. If the string input is less than two characters, that means that there is either a missing opening character or a missing closing character. So if the input string is less than two, then we would have to return false. Now I'm going to go through all of the items in the input string. And then I will check to see if the current item I am on is a closing character. And if it's a closing character, then the stack cannot be empty because if the stack is empty, I will have no way to pop it. And also if the stack is empty, that would mean that there is no corresponding opening character. So if the stack is not empty, we can proceed. And then I'm going to pop my stack. And so the pop item is stack.pop. And after I've popped my stack, which is going to be the opening character that will correspond to the closing character that I have, we're going to find the closing characters index, which is the closing index, closing dot index I because I is the closing character and we want to find the index of the character in our closing variable. Similarly, we'll find the opening index with opening dot index of the popped. We'll use these indexes to see if the opening and the closing characters correspond to each other. And if they don't, that would mean that the string is not a valid parenthesis. So if the opening index does not equal to the closing index, I would have to return false. If these indexes don't match, that means that the opening and closing characters would not correspond to each other. Otherwise, if it's an opening character, we will just push that item into the stack. Okay, now we're almost done. If we loop through the whole string and the stack is empty, that means that the input is valid because all of the opening strings had a corresponding closing string. But if the stack is not empty, one of our opening strings did not have a corresponding closing string. So we would have to return false because it is not valid. So if stack is empty, we'll return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. Okay, so the code is complete. Let's try to run it. Now we see we have the right answers on opening parentheses and closing parentheses will give us an output of true because that is a valid parentheses. It has both the opening and closing parentheses. That is our solution to the valid parentheses problem. I hope you enjoyed creating the stack with me and solving this problem. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Or if you have any questions, please comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye.